and this administration today, here and now, declares unconditional war on poverty in America. I think it was necessary because we had had so much visible social upheaval, riots, assassinations. In fact, we already were two nations separate and unequal along the chasm of race and ethnicity. When the war on poverty, Medicare and Medicaid started, we had a national poverty level of 22 percent. Ten years later, it was 11 percent. That's without precedent. It has crept up back with the abandonment of those kinds of interventions and policies into something better than 14 percent. What is not reflected in that number is something community health centers, particularly in urban areas, know very well, which is that we have created great urban concentrations of poverty which have developed pathologies all of their own. And we're going to have to find ways to unpack those concentrations of poverty. And the Supreme Court ruling to strengthen fair housing laws and their implementation uh, will help. Top priority goes to serving people. And always patients are seen as people whose health needs are bound up with the other circumstances of their lives. We have had a decade of research, dis attention and discussion to the social determinants of health. We know that to be born poor is to live a shorter, sicker life. We know that a childhood in poverty literally is embodied in changes in the brain and brain structure that clearly have something to do with subsequent illness, poverty, and a shorter life. And so we are really starting again to pay attention to intervene upstream in the root causes of what are making people sick. And I expect community health centers to have a new life uh, in that kind of social and environmental intervention as part of their work uh, that characterized the community health centers at the beginning. If you're poor, poverty poor, and you live in places like these, sickness can be a lifelong blight, a kind of vicious circle described by the physician who said, the sick get poorer and the poor get sicker. In the beginning, the flexibility of the Office of Economic Opportunity, the War on Poverty, permitted this kind of expansion, not just with health education, expansion into the environmental causes uh, that were making people sick in the first place. It simply made no sense, particularly in Mississippi, uh, to treat a child on the verge of death with infectious diarrhea, dehydration, and malnutrition, all of them synergistic, hydrate that child, cure the infection, and send him or her back to drink some more water from the drainage ditch. Uh, it's as if in 19th century London, we had decided it was okay to treat people with cholera and send them back to have another drink from the Broad Street pump. One of the things about community health centers is that we have a professional and patient partnership for taking the handle off the Broad Street pump. I think every federally qualified community health center should find a way to have one full-time staff member dedicated solely to exploring and establishing these kinds of collaborative efforts. 
uh, to be going to the housing department, the transportation department, the legal department, the other branches of city government and city councils and state agencies and saying, what can we do together uh, as a health issue uh, to affect the health of our patients and these populations. That's in everybody's interest. That's what brought us to all this in the first place. Uh, we want to be something more than mechanics repairing the illness. Uh, we want to be instruments of change that will make a healthier, longer life uh, available to so many people. Those changes in the Affordable Care Act, in the way uh, we reimburse, really put most health centers in a very good position because of uh, the quality of uh, what's done in community health centers to start with. And the real impact of those changing means of, re means of reimbursement uh, is uh, to stop unnecessary churning, to stop uh, unnecessary, often wasteful and useless uh, services uh, because of the incentives provided by fee-for-service uh, health centers to start with. Uh, employ salaried physicians who don't respond to the incentives of fee-for-service uh, so we are in a particularly good position uh, among all healthcare institutions uh, to respond to this change because we're already there.